Hello, and welcome to the Vaccine Summer Series. This series is a collaboration between the Philadelphia Department of Public Health's Immunization Program and the School District of Philadelphia. My name is Jennifer Malins, a Provider Quality Assurance Nurse with the Immunization Program, and I am excited to present to you our fifth webinar in this series, DTAP or TDAP, which one to choose. Today's agenda will cover what are diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, and DTAP or Tdap. How does one know which product to choose? What is diphtheria? Diphtheria is the D in DTAP and Tdap, and it is a serious infection caused by a bacterium that makes a toxin. And the toxin is what causes people to get very sick. The bacteria spreads from person to person, usually through respiratory droplets, like from coughing or sneezing. People also can get sick from touching infected open sores or ulcers. When the bacteria infect the respiratory tract, it can cause weakness, sore throat, mild fever, and swollen glands in the neck. Complications from respiratory diphtheria may include airway blockage, myocarditis, polyneuropathy, and kidney failure. For some people, respiratory diphtheria can lead to death. Even with treatment, about one in 10 patients die. Without treatment, up to half of patients can die from the disease. In the United States, there are four vaccines used to prevent diphtheria, DTAP, DT, Tdap, and TD. Diphtheria is also included in many combination vaccines. Therefore, people of all ages need diphtheria vaccines. What is tetanus? Tetanus is the T in DTAP and Tdap and is an uncommon but very serious bacterial infection. Unlike other vaccine preventable diseases, tetanus is not spread from person to person. Spores of tetanus bacteria are everywhere in the environment, including soil, dust, and manure. The spores can get into someone's body through broken skin, usually through injuries. Did everyone's parents warn them about stepping on rusty nails? People often call tetanus lockjaw because one of the most common signs is tightening of the jaw muscles. Tetanus infection can lead to serious health problems, including being unable to open the mouth and having trouble swallowing and breathing. And tetanus can lead to death. On average, one to two in 10 cases are fatal. In the United States, there are four vaccines used to prevent tetanus, DTAP, DT, Tdap, and TD. And tetanus also is included in many combination vaccines. The United States sees an average of about 30 reported cases of tetanus each year. Nearly all cases are among people who did not get all the recommended tetanus vaccinations. Therefore, people of all ages need tetanus vaccines. What is pertussis? Pertussis is the P in DTAP and Tdap. Pertussis is more commonly known as whooping cough and is a very contagious respiratory illness caused by bacteria that spread from person to person, usually through respiratory droplets like from coughing or sneezing. Some people have mild symptoms and don't know they're sick, but they can still spread the bacteria to others. Many babies who get whooping cough are infected by people who don't know they have it. In its early stages, whooping cough appears to be nothing more than a common cold. Therefore, doctors often do not suspect or diagnose it until more severe symptoms appear. The graph looks at the disease progression. Whooping cough can be highly contagious for a couple of weeks, which is why it can be seen going around many daycares and classrooms during the school year. It can cause serious and sometimes deadly complications in babies and young children. 
Babies and children who have not had all recommended whooping cough vaccines are more likely to get serious complications such as apnea. So as you can see, staying on top of routine vaccination is really important. The CDC recommends pertussis vaccination, even if you had the disease before, since natural immunity fades and does not offer lifelong protection. In the United States, there are two vaccines used to prevent pertussis, DTaP and Tdap, and pertussis also is included in many combination vaccines. Therefore, people of all ages need pertussis or whooping cough vaccines. So how can we help prevent these diseases? With vaccines. The CDC recommends that children receive five DTaP shots at these ages. Dose one at two months, dose two at four months, dose three at six months, dose four between 15 to 18 months, and dose five when the child enters school at four to six years old. And as a note, dose five is not necessary if dose four was administered at age four years or older and was at least six months after dose three. A booster dose of Tdap is recommended at 11 to 12 years old, and both the DTaP series and the Tdap booster are required for school. Now we will look at DTaP versus Tdap. So DTaP is for children six weeks to six years old, and it has a higher concentration of diphtheria and pertussis, hence the capital D and P in the name. It's approximately three to five times higher than what you have in the Tdap vaccine. So in Tdap, it's for older children, seven to 10 years old, or adolescents and adults and it has a lower concentration of diphtheria and pertussis, hence the lowercase d and p, and both have the same concentration of tetanus, which is why there is a capital T in both DTaP and Tdap. So for choosing DTaP or Tdap, you always want to choose your product based on the age of the patient. Use DTaP for infants through children six years of age. And an easy way to remember is D is for diapers. And use Tdap for children seven years of age and older. And you can remember T is for teens. And now it can get complicated, but remember the age of the patient is always key. Even if the patient has not completed their DTaP series, once they turn seven years old, they need to switch products and receive Tdap. And this is seen most in our recent immigrant populations. As a reminder, products without the pertussis antigen may be used in very rare cases where a person has a specific contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines. And if you turn your attention to the middle of the screen, this messaging is an example of common CDC messaging related to DTaP and Tdap. The message clearly states DTaP is used through six years of age and the use of Tdap starts at seven years of age. I want to bring your attention to DT or the diphtheria tetanus vaccine. This vaccine is available and is listed on the 2023 schedule, but this year, Sanofi stopped manufacturing more of this vaccine. Discussions are underway regarding updated vaccine recommendations for those who should not receive the acellular pertussis-containing vaccines. If you were using this product previously, any children under the age of seven years old without an allergy to the acellular pertussis portion of the vaccine should receive the DTaP vaccine. As a reminder, this is table one of the 2023 ACIP recommended child and adolescent immunization schedule. If you forget the age when a child transitions from DTaP to Tdap, you can see it is here on the schedule itself. 
DTAP is used for children under seven years of old age, and Tdap is used for children seven years old and up. The CDC offers catch-up guidance for these vaccines for children whose vaccinations have been delayed. These are great because they clearly state no dose today in some of the scenarios. These are available on the CDC's website. In conclusion, Patients' birth dates are very important for these two vaccines. If the child is six weeks through six years of age, give DTAP. Once the child turns seven years of age, give Tdap. If the child's seventh birthday is tomorrow and they are scheduled today and need to be vaccinated, use Dtap. Remember, there's still six today. However, if the child misses their appointment and comes on their seventh birthday, they're now seven, we would use Tdap. Thank you for attending this webinar. If you have any questions about this webinar or the Vaccine Summer Series, you may email me at jennifer.malins at phila.gov. And remember to be on the lookout for the other webinars in this series. Thank you and have a great day.